this was uh, not more pervasive. I will say, if you happen to spot a copy of A Shadow Hunters at your local board game cafe, definitely try it out because that might be the only way you can play it. So, Shadow Hunters is made by Yasutaka Ikeda with Z Games, like I mentioned, and you can play with a four to eight players, but I would definitely recommend shooting for eight because the gameplay is a lot more complex and fun the more people you have. And the game takes about an hour depending on, of course, how many people, um, but it's relatively short. The concept of a shadow hunters is there's a world with shadow demons and where there are demons, there are hunters, hence the name. And the trick to this game is you won't know who is who. So it's kind of part of the process to try to figure out the lay of the land first and then take out your enemy. So I like to call these types of games mafia games because when I was a kid, we would play the most simplistic version of this game, which we called Mafia, and it wasn't a board game or a card game, it was just a spoken game that, you know, we would play in the backyard at sleepovers. Um, so if you're like me, you may remember this game, and it usually involves a whole bunch of accusations, debating, lying, and sometimes pleading. And um, the general format of these mafia games is there are secret bad guys amongst us and we have to try to suss them out and then take them out. 
this one is I bet you're either a neutral or a shadow. If so, you must either give an equipment card to the current player or receive one damage. That one's a little bit more complex, but you can see they're all the same format. You're figuring out some piece of information about the other player and it does some action with it. Although, just make sure if you're drawing the hermit card, you don't do what's on the card. You pass it to someone else and they do what's on the card. This whole exchange will be in secret and if you are given a hermit card, you have to be honest. Unless you have a special ability saying otherwise, but for the most part, you have to be honest. <laughs> so, there shouldn't be any words spoken, um, but in games like this, a huge part of the fun in the gameplay is the table talk, the debating, all of that stuff. So you can, afterwards, you know, talk it up, lie, cheat, do a little table talk, bluff people, um, to get them to do what you want them to do. So, uh, there's a lot of strategy and sort of, um, bluffing, which I'm very terrible at, but <laughs> it's fun nonetheless. <laughs> the next one is the church. So, at the church, you will draw a white card and follow the instructions. And then, similarly for the cemetery, you will draw a black card and read the instructions. So, the white card and black card decks are both items, um, just different types. And, um, within each of these, there are two, um, play styles of items. So, one is the single-use item, which you will use immediately when you draw it on that turn. So, you'll pick it up, read it, use it, discard it. The other type of item card is equipment cards, and these cards will stay with you face up for all to see card remains in effect for as long as you have it. And at the bottom of each card, it states what it does. So, this one says, you must attack another character on your turn. This attack uses the four-sided die. So, that's how item cards work. The next area is be within range, and range is indicated 
of resistance. 